and John Kelly from Bahia in the Loop Head Peninsula. John is an extraordinary character, full of presence, and he's regarded as being a, the high priest of Irish music, as, as the term is usually ascribed to him. He's a wide knowledge of music, and both on the fiddle and concertina. Partic uh, when he plays the concertina, he's playing the music of a hundred years ago. It's, it is all the uh, uh, settings that are, are nowhere else to be, to be heard. He is also uh, has been a catalyst for the music over the last 50 years in Dublin. He has been the centre of every group and at the centre of the revival of Irish music from the 50s onwards. So John, can we start with you and ask you a bit about yourself? But you're all, you come from a Brock Gaetan. <coughs> Would you give us the precise area, John? I was just giving yeah. off the head. Rehe and Krish, Karagal Hota, Bunt and Lar, Tapiras, Bunt and Lar, the Naka, Lake Kelm Lena, a Rogame, our dear Lunish. Kirtlar. Was there any uh, musicians of note in your area or in your family, John? Well, there was a, a, a fine scattering of musicians on every side of me, both good and bad, and a good, a good lot of singers as well. But the instrumental players were uh, confined to the concertina, maybe sometime a melodeon, but a good few fiddle players. There were, I suppose, a couple of fiddle players in every town land, you might say. In, in a place called Lachine, there was, I think, about a dozen fiddle players. In, that's nearer to Kelkey, like, yes. I um, Moveen and Lachine, Donaha, that's good, Cargo Holt, Ross, you had two or three fiddle players in Ross, a couple in Kiltrelic. Ray, there was two, that was Mikey Callahan and myself. And I heard you mention uh, Michael McMahon from Lachine. Yeah, M Michael McMahon. Yes, he was a, a very good, very he was a very active musician in them days. Because way back in the thirties, uh, people were very poor, and they, they had uh, to hold rattles. They'd rattle maybe a sheep or a, a bottle or something like that, or, a hot, a hot, or even a horse's collar. <laughs> and, and, so the shin to go in, and well, the, the, the man might end up, the house might end, end up making maybe a, a pipe or not, which is an awful lot of money, after giving tea. But there was, the, the rattles were very plentiful in, um, yeah, as they went along, they, 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 they gathered momentum to see, they, they, if you would want tonight, well, I'd have one next week, and that's the way it, it, it went. And they weren't able to get the musicians to go around. So they'd be two or three of them on the one night. But Michael McMahon was very active in, the, in those times playing for rappers and weddings and anything. He's, he's a very good player, yeah? He's a, a fisherman as well. He's, He's rock fishing off the high cliffs. There. He died on Christmas morning in 1930. That's a long time ago, no wonder. Yeah, good memory too, John. Yeah. Uh, concertina players, John, you mentioned some people before it was uh, Mary Nocton and yeah. Tim Griffin. Tim. Mary Hoolan, she got married to Nocton. Mm. She was a, she was about the best that was there. She was beautiful, and she used to sing, the company herself singing. She was a beautiful singer, and she <coughs> she learned the the cross style of playing the concertina, like that. We 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 only played it in in the street line before she introduced the the, the cross style of playing, and she got it from from Kilmeary, a man by the name of. 
most they can the village and to the cousin of his. I think she was Mrs. Hawk, and he was a good player. And strange to say, he was Patrick Murphy too. No relation to Paddy Murphy. I think he was his people were tear or someplace around uh, uh, at least he case his side, I think it was. But he was a he was a lot of, I remember him, he was a beautiful player. And she she had a lovely concertina, the German concertina was strangest looking concertina I ever saw. The big big keys and they were kind of bent you know, from 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 youth when they had them to the most beautiful tone concertina yeah. I ever had. It was a, a cross between uh, tenor and and, and uh, flat, you know. That is, there was a beautiful tone. You'd hear it. You'd hear it. She used to play outside the door in the evening, the summer evening. You'd hear the, the music would go down the valley to out there. I lived about half a mile down the flat. The field from in your time, those people you mentioned earlier on, Mrs. Nocton and uh, Mrs. Galvin, what sort of instruments did they play? Were they cheap? Mrs. Galvin was a fiddle player. Mrs. Nocton. Tim Griffin was about the next best to, to, to Mary Hood. Maybe better, some people say, but he got a concertina for the States, but it wasn't an English one. It was a good German type of concertina, great tone that they made. The Germans made very good class concertinas in the, in the, on, the, on the flat pitch as well, you know. Like if we got them, you know, they, were, they made some very cheap ones, but if, if you put one of the dearer good ones in, it, it, it was. That have good internet. Would it be pitched in C or B? About C. C. Uh, sometimes about C. But uh, oh, one, yeah. another man by the name of Mikey Gary, he, he played the concertine. He was the son of Patsy Gary, and he was a very good player. And my uncle Tom Pierre, of course. For she taught me to play the concertina, and it was a beautiful player in the common style. The rhythm was faultless. As, as a matter of fact, I often said when I, when in the latter years coming down with it, and I used to bring out for a night or two, I said it was a pity it was ever changed. You know, the the half section of the the music was it showed out more in the concertina. That time it was flow. Yes. It was beautiful, you know, like the rhythm was outstanding altogether. But Kilkee Town was a great town for concertina players, and they had English concertinas there before we. It was there I bought my first concertina, which was made in, it was bought, my father bought it, I'd say. But it was, back then there was about six English concertinas in Kilkee. Paddy McGrath, the blacksmith, he had one. He was a, he was a beautiful player. And another man by the name of Flattery. And uh, Austin Cain. I think he was from the Beltard. He had a good English concertina. And I used to get the loan of these concertinas. So I'd meet them out, out, out maybe at some data. At a race in Kilkee, they'd be playing and having two sets. And they often played them, but I, I thought I'd never get on them because if you couldn't have. The old people to, to buy things like that, that yes. they'd, they'd be maybe ten pounds. That, that, that was the price of two cattle. That was. Oh, the days. So you eventually got what did, who gave you the concertina, your first concertina? Well, I took three years concertinas, and but they wouldn't last six months. And I was uh, well pleased with, with the concertina until, until I, I got the fiddle. And then I found the fiddle was always in show. And it was very easy, you see, it was so beautiful to play it around. And I lost interest in the concertina, but what I learned, I had all the time, and I used it. I did the Islam show, now I have to meet people with concertinas, and I'd always play up the show. And I used to be overjoyed to play. In many places, I remember I met people in Longford. I played in Longford and I played it all. Oh, I got the loan of a concertina. I played it in the stall for, for, for a whole Sunday there. And I don't know, I think I was playing better than I'm playing now. Because, and I don't need the, the simple tunes that, that I learned. 
the name of the body? It's the style of others, the so yeah. ornate, and it's, it's uh, unique nowadays. Huh? Mrs. Malali, you, you mentioned, she comes from... She's, yeah, she's a witness, she's her, her, her maiden name is McCarthy, from... Coor. From uh, where? Coor. Coor, Coor, yeah. yeah. And she, she was a, a very interesting woman in the concertina. They, I heard, I heard Tim Griffin playing a tune, and to between a hornpipe and a reel, it should be played for the last part of the set. And I kind of lost the tunnel in it. And to my amazement, Mrs. Mullally got the concertina one time in my shop, and she played the tune. The very same thing had it. And I'll try to play it now. Good man. Good man. Tim used to play that for, I remember Tim playing at the American Wakes and in the morning everybody would be crying. He'd come up with a rake of them tunes and uh, the, the mostly girls were going to America. They'd have to be down to the last set in the morning, maybe in the sun up, mm. going to the train and sailing. The most of them didn't ever come back. Yeah. Where would they go from? That Limerick or, or Cone? Yeah. They, they, they'd go by, by train to, 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 from Turkey to Cole. To Lenrich and to Lenrich to Cole. There was heavy immigration from those. Oh, there was. It was all America there. We, we had the four generations who went to the States, and James is the fifth. Yeah. There was James is the fifth, James Kelly's son, went out there. Yeah. And you, you know, probably, John, apart from your uncle, did your mother and father play? 
Well, my mother played the concertina. That was the first music I ever heard. She played the concertina all her life, nearly like this. Not a lot. She she had eight children and got a couple of or nine. A couple of couple of lives. We could sit for eight anyway. She, yeah. she was a great um, enthusiast for music and she was a beautiful singer. She was a beautiful wife. I have songs of her. <laughs> taken on my father's anniversary, the 50 years of Adam, when I went down the time of the theatre corner in 1958. Nice. Oh, she sang a few, 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 my grandmother was, I was about 15 years when my grandmother died, and she spoke mostly in Irish. <laughs>